Where'd that come from? Good morning, everyone. How are you? It's good to be back. Um, so thank you so much for all the good wishes for John. Um, <clears throat> what was going on specifically with his surgery on Monday was that he has a retina that's almost unattached, detached, and so they wanted to fix it. <laughs> I was supposed to go play with Robin in Berkeley, and it was scarier than the surgery was getting into Alta Bates and getting home. And yes, I did just sit and um, stitch my heart out. In fact, I commanded a whole corner of the waiting room and got a lot done on our stitching project. But um, we really didn't know what we were getting into. And so he has to basically wear an eye patch, all right, because when they do this, those of you who are in the medical profession will probably know what I'm talking about. They um, they put gas bubbles in, and the gas bubble keeps it from getting infected. But it's like John's like going, oh, it's like seasick stuff. And so um, coming, he had to wear a patch at night, and he had a patch on the first day. And coming home, he said, do you have an eye patch? Well, of course I do, right? Because of my pirate face. <laughs> so... He was running around wearing this yesterday, and I said, you know, you can't go in public. But anyways, um, I felt bad for him, and I got him another patch, and now and now he is equating with John Wayne. Pretty bold talk for a one-eyed fat man. <laughs> <laughs> we sent this to the kids, the video of that, and Shelly goes, oh, is this a new accessory, or did something happen? know about. Very, very funny. So all is good. The bubble's kind of driving him crazy. And, um, but you know, we'll get through it. And he's just basically housebound because he can't drive or anything for a week. So yay, it's me. Um, I just have to tell you, everybody, when I go and look in the forum, you make me laugh. Helen, you in particular. <laughs> In defense of Brown, <laughs> she put this up because I think I slammed Brown the other day. So, Helen, thank you for your kind and gentle reminder. So, I want to tell you a story about college. It, it was a crochet class with a, I may have shared it before, but it's worth sharing again. Um, my crochet teacher was amazing. It was freeform crochet, and she could take the ugliest yarns in the world and weave together well, wall sculptures. And I remember one day I walked in, and I had to tell the, the, this, my peers in the class, I had to educate them on the good colors and the bad colors of the world. And so basically I started knocking the autumn colors, Helen, like brown, green, orange, yellow. And she's Marika Contemposis. She stopped that class, pointed her little finger at me and said, to say you hate a color tells me you're ignorant of its use. Looking kind of stupid. So thank you for that humble pie, Helen. You dished it up very sweetly with whipped cream. <laughs> My mom used to say, to say you hate a color is like saying you hate a key on a piano. You just don't understand who it's playing with. So it, I'm going to commission you this. If there's a color or that you are less than fond of, you might want to buy a focus fabric that has that color in it and make something, you know? And right after that era, when I got into quilt making, guess what my favorite palette became? Autumn. Guess what my favorite time of year is? Autumn. So what I would like to tell you right now, I'm wondering if you can see that mail thing that just popped up from Stanley Carpet Cleaner. <laughs> um, I'm changing up a little bit what we're doing today because I forget what I... John will say, what are you doing? Mary Kay needs to know. I throw it out. And then when I actually start thinking about the class, I'm thinking, no, that's not what, that's not what we're going to do. We are going to do a lazy daisy, but rather than a 
the other stitch, I can't remember what I said, we're going to be doing the French knot because they go together beautifully. They, they make a wonderful thing. So we will work on that. So the other thing I'm kind of excited about, well, let me just say this. When we tape shows, I get to meet people that I can tell you right now, I ordinarily would not be able to meet. And so this is the case of Lee Chapel Monroe. She kind of stole my heart. She uh, actually, um, I'm going to show you a tip that her grandma shared with her way back. And I asked if I could do this way back. And now I'm realizing that it's perfect for what we're doing today. But um, I love the last part. This um, is that, you know, why is a company called May Chapel and not Lee Chapel Monroe? You can read all about it here. But the short version is it's named for an awesome lady, my great grandma. So maybe it was her great grandma's trick, but anyways, so what I, I was just really taken with her, just a great person. Okay. And she has a thing with C and T that is called, uh, the quilting hour. And she brings in different guests and chooses different subject matters. And moi is going to be there this Friday. So how it worked Friday at noon Pacific time. You can register for the class and um, come on in, but I'm going to be December 17th, Modernational Quilts, Modern Meets Traditional, which is, I would say, kind of almost my full quilting career, although now I'm stepping away from any sort of rule books. But I'm going to be sharing some work of mine and my philosophy on that. And if I'm reading the promo right too, I believe Anita Solomon Grossman or Lita Grossman Solomon will be in there too. She's a pretty amazing woman. So, whoops, there's that. So how, how do you find this thing? Okay. Oh, here are some of the guests. Okay. And a lot of these people have actually been on the show for that matter. So again, I am this Friday noon Pacific time. And um, if you can't make it, no worries. It's all, once you buy it, it's yours. All right. It's in your coffer. And so what you're going to do is you're going to go to a C and T publishing. It's ctpub.com. And you're going to find the creative spark area is what you're going to find. Okay. And then you'll go down there and you can see that Lee is up and front center left. A lot of really good stuff. So, excuse me, I need to take a drink here. <clears throat> My voice is catching up this morning. It's not everybody that can sleep with a pirate, okay? <laughs> Okie dokie, enough of my ridiculous humor. So, okay, what do we have going on here? Um, let's take a look at uh, what Joanne said. Oh, all right, all right. So Joanne hung on to some of her kids' clothing, and their kids are like now 40, where she had done some embroidery on it. And ta-da, so there we go with the little bib that she's put into a little purse. And I will tell you a zip thing. I just did a class on that. I didn't teach it, I took it. And now I'm the maven of making little zipper bags. But look at this repurposing these coveralls. Hey, Lee, I can't wait either. So then look at this. Let's just all say, ah, oh, collectively. <laughs> you know, I did some of this handwork for my kids, and I'm going to tell you right now, it is long gone. So, uh, Joanne, thank you. Let's go back and look at number one again. Thank you for sending that along. I think that is just beyond precious. Just fabulous. Okay, so now some of you are getting started here. Uh, here's Suzanne, she's getting started. Oh, I uh, wanted to show this especially, I love the way you did squares around the edge. I think that's really extremely intriguing. So thanks for sending, thanks for putting it up in the forum. There's so much up in the forum. That's where I found out about the defense against Brown, <laughs> in defense of Brown. <laughs> and then here's Helen again. <laughs> Helen, have we met before? Because I just feel like I've met you. And then John was asking if you were from Canada or England or something like that. 
Okay. You know, Ellen, I used to embroider my jeans and then, not my jeans, I embroidered uh, blue work shirts and I did it for denim, you know, like for my mom and dad for Christmas and stuff like that. And they wore them to death, like around the collar and all of that. So what is Helen doing? Okay. Look at that. Now, Helen, what's going, the reason I think it's tangling is when you're working your thread, periodically, um, it'll get wound up kind of on itself and start kinking. I will like let the, the needle and the thread unwind is what I'll do. And that is something just to kind of do every 10 passes or something like that. The thread magic stuff, I actually prefer for when I'm doing metallics and all that. But uh, yeah, it gets all kinky and it just must be the way we needle and we put it in the, in the fabric. Okay, and then I'm sorry I don't have a name here, but okay, cool. You've got all these different shapes. And to me, I looked at it and I thought, this is kind of George Jetson-y to me. Or 1950s or 60s wallpaper. My girlfriend Lois was wondering about a paisley. And it looks to me like that teardrop is a darn close cousin to a paisley. So yeah, Lo, you can do that. And then here's Suzanne. She's getting going. All right. Fun. And I have to tell you, when you start, if you're like me, you're going to look at your piece and go, I don't like you. And that's what's going on with me. And then you just keep stitching and stitching and stitching and do not get judgmental on your thing and just keep going. And that's what I found happened at the hospital. All of a sudden, I was like so into it, I couldn't stand it. Okay, Debbie was having problems. Oh, shoot. She was having problems, so she put the batting behind it and finds that that's much better for her handling. But Debbie, I mean, I realize this silk is picking up every single color in, uh, shadow in the universe. Be careful not to be pulling too tight. Uh, that one green circle that's kind of front and center but down, it's naked. To me, that looks like it's pretty tight. So just be aware that you're not pulling too tight. Again, the photography could be fooling me because of the way the silk shadows up and all that. And I think this is also another Debbie, uh, or I could have, you know, I do this in the morning when one eye is open. Uh, look at that dan dandelion. And where even some of the little hoo-hoos fell off. Those are about as simple stitches as it can get. Okay, and this is Hobby Cat. Oh, okay. Cut out some things and put it on top. John, it's so funny because John was looking at one of them and says, but they're not doing circles. And I said, I said, no, and I don't care because what you guys are coming up with, you blow my socks right out the front door. Okay, and then Irene, I finally found you, okay? Um, the, there, this is the Brazilian embroidery. I, I, I don't know how I lost you, but I found you, and there we go. Uh, Hillary, these silks are not tapetas, they're dupionis, but some people are going into their own stash and using whatever they want to use. Okay. Yeah, I love that dandelion too, big time. Okay, and now, Carol, um, <clears throat> You are our superhero, okay? Uh, I love I love what you're doing with um, with the block of the month, and it was Helen I believed that named you superhero. Okay, so our B O M this year color color my world color your world is um, not done with wools, but obviously Carol, our superhero, is under the influence of um, Sue Spargo, and I can't wait to see that finished. Can we just all gasp a little bit here? I mean, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Now let's just take a uh, really close look at what's going on here. I will be able to teach you all those stitches except the bullion. The bullion, Carol, Helen, I'm sorry, Helen, Carol, Helen, 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 Helen. I'm sorry, Helen. Um, Helen calls you a superhero. Um, <clears throat> 
this one stitch I can't teach you here is the bullion. And the bullion is the kind of flower circle on the inside. I am still mastering that stitch. So, but like that center cross hatch, no worries. The other, the other French knots, yay, those V's, no big deal. We can do all that here. And I'm hoping that if you are super intrigued with this, that you will then step into the world of Sue Spargo. Here's another Carol one. I mean, I don't know how to do that inchy worm either. Those might be stacked bullions. It's around that one circle. But, oh, I am just absolutely loving your work, and I can't wait to see it finished. Okay. So, great. Everybody's getting in the room. So, let's talk about what we're going to learn today. All right? Let me look at my piece here. Oh, wait, let me hold it up. Okay. So, we learned how to do the chain stitch on Wednesday, which is this. And this is a cousin to the Lazy Daisy, big time. I mean, they're, they're just so similar, it's crazy. And that's why I decided to do the Lazy Daisy today and then move on to the French Knot so you could do the Lazy Daisy. So I have prepared this fabric here. I'm using a hoop in this instance of um, demoing because it's easier for me to get it flat and to get it smart for the camera than if I'm doing it free form. Again, you can do whatever you want, but if you're not using a hoop, and in the beginning I said I didn't, don't pull it too tight. The caterpillar is bullion knots. Thanks, Carol. That's what I thought. So, okay, I've got my, um, my, my little knot here, and I'm going to come up the back, and let's just, why am I doing that? Let's just do, let's do a recap, well, let's do a lazy daisy. All right, so I'm going to come up, and again, I am a left-hander, so I'm going to pull the thread to my right hand, I'm going to hold it taut, and I'm going to hold my needle with my left hand, which means if you were a right hand, you would do exactly the opposite. You would hold the needle with your right hand and pull it to the left with your left thumb. I can feel the knot behind it, all right? Let's take a look at it right there. I'm going to just kind of hold it at the same time I'm holding this here, thread, and because I don't really want to go straight down into that beginning hole because I really don't want to go through that knot because it can get hung up. So what I'm going to do is I'm holding it. I've made a little stitch. Oh, let me show you what Lee's grandma or great grandma taught her. If you don't know how big to do that stitch, you have a couple options. You could draw, say, a circle with a dot and stay within that parameter. Maybe I should do that. Let's say I'm going to make the lazy daisy like that big. I love this pen, guys. It goes away by itself in a matter of about uh, two days, one or two days. If I don't like it, I can just go like that and have it go bye-bye. All right? But you can do that and then just go out to that edge. So let's do that for grins. This is going to be kind of a big one. Pull the knot aside. Go out to there. Oh, do as I say, not as I do. I'm going to pull this. Then I'm going to catch it. And I'm going to come down. I'll show, I'll show you Grandma's trick on the next one when we're doing a really cool wreath. Then I'm going to come back up in that center. And yeah, well, it gets twisted. Your thread does get twisted. I can go down in the same hole if I want now because I'm not going into the beginning knot. Hold it. A lazy daisy, I think, typically has five, but it can have as many petals as you want. It's like this one might have six. Probably depends on the size. See how I'm catching it? And I'm paying no attention to comments right now. 
because I can't. My eyeballs only go one way. You know, they didn't warn John about this air bubble. And so when they were pre-checking him out before the doctor came in, he couldn't see. And he was quietly freaking out. I was quietly freaking out. But then it turned out, because, you know, the, the technician isn't allowed to say anything. Somebody needs to change that rule. Should I do one more? One, two, three, four. Uh, let me do one more. I could swing either way. And by holding it with your opposite thumb, you're just keeping it from getting all tangled up. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. I love this variegated stuff. Sparrow! All right, I'm gonna turn it over. Cute, cute, cuteness, cuteness. And then what I'm gonna do is I just take a little tuck of the inner fa the facing, the fabric prep. I wrap a knot around it, hold it with my thumb, my right thumb, I'm a left-hander, and go like that. Yay, all right. So let's do, again, don't cut down just kind of slice. It's okay if the tail's there because it's not going to show through. Now let's do a French knot. This is going to be the hardest stitch that we've done so far. And I commission you to practice it on something else if you've never done it. So I've got my single knot on the, on the um, end of the thread. I'm going to come up and I'm going to do a bunch of these actually for you. Whoops. I want to go in the center. All right. So what I'm going to do is now I'm actually going to kind of hold it with my right hand. If you're a right-hander, you will hold the thread with your left hand. Okay. So you go around one, two, or three. I don't care. Hold this. Oh, shoot. Now my hands are feeling all clunky. One, two, three. I'm going to go back down into the hole. I'm holding it taut with my thumb. I love French knots. And you can pile as many wraps as you want. Oh, isn't that dandy? And there's that adorable French knot. Let's do it again. Okay, I'm going to come up. I'm going to hold it with my my pointer finger and my thumb. One, two, three. Go down right next to where you came up. Keep holding it taut. And yes, this is a really easy one to goof up. Let me do it one more time, and then I want to show you something really cool. We'll get back to Lee's grandma's trip trick. Silk's coming through. One, two, three. Okay. So let me finish this one off and then show you what I started doing yesterday. And I'll show you where I got the idea. See, I'm kind of doing a French knot right there. Get in there. You can see why hoops get in the way. If you had a bunch of stitches, you could wrap it you could wrap it around the stitches too, like just going down a couple times underneath. If you so wished. Oh, the other thing I'll do is before now this thing is already starting to spin this thread. So I kind of unspun it. I can go do another little French knot in the air. And now I can cut and I have a knot ready to go for the next cartwheel. So let me show you something in the book, or in the back of the book. Um, and this book is Hand Embroidery Dictionary by uh, Kristen Brown. 
I saw this on the back and I went, oh, I love you. Well, what's going on here? It's basically a lazy daisy, a straight stitch, a lazy daisy, a straight stitch, etc., and then French knots dumped in. So let's take a look at what I'm doing here on the next piece. I don't want to lose, I'm losing my threads. No, I'm not. All right. So what I did was I did a chain stitch around here, and then with different size circles, I drew the center stitch, the center line. And then I went around it. This is kind of, I'm making my bowling, um, bumper bowling, so I know where to stay within. And once I got going, I thought, wow, these are kind of far apart, but I can certainly play within this. So let's get the green, and I'll show you what I learned from Lee. From Lee's grandma or great-grandma, Lee, you tell us. Okay, so I'm going to make my little O. I'm going to come up. There it is. Uh, let me get another hoop on it. Again, it's just easier for me to handle it and show you. Okay, I'm going to put it right on the edge here. Okay, make it tighter. And again, this ink will go away magically by itself. <clears throat> so I'm going to come up behind. Right. Now, I'm going to come in here. Okay, I'm, now how, how do I know how far to go? This is the great trick that she taught me. You can take like a fine Sharpie felt tip pen. I'm going to mark this here, and I'm going to mark this here. And that's going to be my measurement. So, there... Ah, sorry, I'm fiddle-faddling. Here, I came up here. Here, I'm going to go down here. Then I'm going to come up, not in the same hole, but right next to it, anywhere right next to it, maybe behind it, but not in the same hole. And then I'm going to use this measuring guide for how big to do my lazy daisy. I mean, you could mark it if you wanted. I don't care. Let's see, right about there. Remember, hold the thread, come up. I'm at an angle. Go down. Go back to the base of the lazy daisy, which is right here. And I realize I've told you I'm not, I'm doing. Um, simple stitches. This, these are simple stitches that are turning into a more of a complicated cartwheel. Look good? Yeah. Oh, that's not a lazy. Oh, I did that wrong. Okay, so what do you do when you do that wrong? I was thinking lazy daisy. I'm going to go back down that hole. And even if I don't go exactly in that hole, I don't care. Okay, I'm going to go up one, making my little stem, then I'm going to come up right next to it. I see we're running a little bit long, but I think this is totally worth it. There. Lee, thank you so much. I don't think this made it on your show, which by the way, aired about a month ago. It is show number 2910. I'll do one more. I will take questions at the end. Start giving them to me now. I'm going to come back up again. Again, not in the same hole because it'll pull out. I'm going to do my little lazy daisy. That's good, following my markings. And so it goes, right? 
But then, yay, hey, little French knot. Do a little. Oh, yeah, I knotted it. I'm just going to go right in here. Come up. One, two, three. Go down next to it, not in the same hole. Come up. I just think this is so darn cute. Now, this may be a little too naked for me when it's all said and done. I'm going to do more stitches. Then let's take a look at the back. I think that's always kind of interesting. Okay. So let me bring this up here. So guess what I'm going to be doing when we're done here? I just put that over there. And yes, somebody said don't leave your needles in your silk because it will poke holes. But let's take a look at that. Uh, pretty awesome. Uh, here, I decided that this was looking too naked. So I put in these little stitches and then I started wrapping them. But what we're going to do on Friday are fun things you can do with straight stitches. But look what those French knots do. I mean, they're fabulous. And then I've made these little V's. I'll be showing you that. French knots. Yay. All right. Let me... Let me take a look at questions here. Now look what I a sign of a quilter. <laughs> uh, BN, I haven't heard that French knots only have one wrap. Most people that teach French knots stay use two or three wraps. Susan, I prefer the colonial knots too. I haven't learned um, how to do colonial knots yet also. Um, but it will be in your book. Would this project work with linen? Absolutely, 100% raging smirk. I like that. John, what do you have there? Just the one you covered. Okay. Yeah, Noella, I love the marking on the thumbnail. And that was from Lee. We learn these things. And I'll tell you, when we're taping, if I remember or retain something like that, that means it really stuck. Because usually I can't even tell you what the show was about after the fact. All right? So let me tell you what's going on Friday. Okay, Friday, um, well, I'm doing my thing with Lee May at noon, uh, Lee May Chapel, or Lee Chapel May, Lee Chapel May. <laughs> and that's at noon Pacific time, but at 10 o'clock Pacific time, I will be sharing an um, uh, interview I did with Claudia File. She's from Germany. She Her, her stuff is just amazing, but... No, I already corrected it. Yeah, John said you said it wrong. I already corrected it. Um, her stuff is amazing, and she works in silks, all right? So you not, I mean, take your breath away, her work is. So I did a video with her. We were to have gotten her at Houston also, and um, Claudia File. And then I'm going to do some fun things with straight stitches. Today was a little bit harder than um, what I promised you or in the order of, but I felt like I couldn't do the lazy daisy uh, without doing the French knot. So, you know, it's the prerogative of the person throwing the party, and I chose to change it. Mary Kay really tries to keep me on track, but I think it's kind of impossible. All right. I use magnets to hold the needle, put two magnets, one on the front and one on the back, on the back. And then, they, then you can put your needles on it. Cynthia, thank you. Let's see, yikes. I thought the class four was the 20th. Well, it is the 20th. But don't you guys want me to show you something on Friday also? Yeah, let's just do something on Friday just to keep you busy over the weekend. Because basically what's going to happen is we're going to dip into next week. And then because it's Christmas, we're all going to kind of be taking a break from this. And I want to give you enough stuff to keep your hands busy all right so that's kind of my motivation of doing both so i'm going to i'm, I'm going to sneak in a bonus class yes to linen yes to classes yes friday okay great okay good that's what we're going to do it's our time it's our class and i so appreciate you choosing to spend your time with me 
Oh, also, I almost forgot. We had up to December 15th, if you joined, you got uh, thequiltshow.com for 49 bucks a year. You know, you get the three block of the month patterns and you got the two books, the um, Quilters of Door by Anne and then uh, Lilo's Your Organizational um, Space. They're downloads, downloads. And um, John decided, I think in the fog of his... Um, Anesthesia, he's going to extend that <laughs> because everybody's taking such advantage of it. And it, it's the season to give and, and you give so much to us. We want to give back to you. So don't delay. Uh, make sure you uh, renew or sign up. If you've never signed up as a star member, now's the time to do it because you can get a Wendy Williams Color My World pattern free. But you're going to need to download it before the end of the year. That is so important, and we're going to be hollering that to you from the rooftops. And there will also be information on the Friday newsletter about Lee's uh, interview with me that we're going to be doing. So, yes, are these downloads available to star members? Absolutely, Jane. Are you, if you're talking about the BOMs, yes, those patterns. That's one of the perks. I mean, when you think about it, you get at the Quilt Show new shows every other week. We probably almost have 400. And um, you get these BOMs. I mean, that's the biggest bargain on the face of the earth. Okay. Really enjoy the project. Ellen says, never done this kind of freeform embroidery before. Very soothing. Yeah, it's very soothing. In fact, I was going to cop out and not really work on my pastel one and continue with my neutral one. And it just sucks me in completely. Oh, the books. Yeah, uh, no, the books. Oh, thank you, Joanne. The books are for people who renew or um, join for the first time. We always have some kind of promotion going, but if it's about time for you to renew, I would, um, I would just go do it. I'll tag onto your membership. Will TQS be making any more silk bundles? Renee asks. You know, this was really interesting because Kristen had one heck of a time even securing the silk we got. In fact, I was talking with Jean Wells at uh, Stitch and Post, and they were having the same issue. There might be some bundles, but there might be some bundles left, but not a lot. A lot. So go go surfing in the store. Oh, TQLs is out of stock. Okay, all right. You guys have my back. I appreciate. Noella, I want to know if you ever get that your package into Canada. This really bugs on me more than it bugs on you. I had somebody else contact me and their book here within the U.S. that I was sending of mine personally. Never got it. It's just a little frustrating. But that's not going to keep us from meeting here, right people? We are in control and we're going to continue to do it. So have a great rest of Wednesday and I'll see you Friday with a bonus class and Claudia file. Bye-bye.